Hello everyone, Sigs here, and welcome to the Akumai Encounter in the Black Fathom Deeps Raid in the World of Warcraft Classic Season of Discovery. So, a couple of quick notes about the boss before we start. Um, it's a pretty simple fight. Uh, tank and spank, and then every 20 seconds he will target a random player, and 3 seconds after that he will cast a breath attack in their direction. Anyone who gets hit by the breath will get a stacking damage over time debuff, which is very bad. It's very hard to heal through, so you want to avoid that breath at all costs. Periodically, an ad will spawn with a cleansing pool that you can stand in to clear all stacks of the damage over time debuff. However, doing so will spawn an ad, so we really don't want anybody other than the tanks to get hit by this breath. When the adds do spawn, they are the priority. You want to take care of them so there's not too much additional damage going out before switching back to the boss. And beyond that, at 50% health, there is a short transition phase in which the boss will take 99% reduced damage until the phase ends, after which he will switch to dealing shadow damage instead of poison. So basically just dodge breath, defeat the adds over the boss, and get the boss's health to zero. That's about it. So with that, let's get into the actual boss fight here. So first I put two regenerations on the tank and then sit down and drink before the pull starts. That way we can start the pull with some arcane blasts, getting in some free damage, topping up the tanks and not having to burn mana on the start of the pull with regeneration. So I go straight into three arcane blasts and then I want to drop my stacks here. So we do a regeneration into an arcane missiles. As you can see, a lot of our mana is already gone, but we got some pretty good opening damage in and the tanks have been getting a lot of healing from us. You can see on the healing meters there. So we've just refreshed our beacon on both of the tanks. We dodged the first breath that happens there. Go back into arcane blasting, just trying to keep the tanks healthy and topped up. Hopefully not burn through too much mana there. So we do two blasts and then we just go into wanding. Here comes another breath, so we dodge. Now the beacon has fallen off of the first tank, so we're gonna need to reapply that on him. I sneak a little arcane blast in there so that while I'm regenerating, uh, arcane blast can fall off. Now here comes the first set of adds. I did use living flame on the pull. Um, I probably should have saved it for this moment here. As you can see, there's one second left and I'm waiting for it to come up and line it up and not paying enough attention to the boss. So I do get hit by the breath there, which is really bad. Um, what I should have done was saved living flame on the pull for this first set of adds. It would have done a lot more damage and a lot more healing than just using it on the boss there. Um, but it is what it is, so now we have a stack of the debuff. Here comes the breath again. We definitely don't want to take any more because we are taking 50 damage per second for basically the rest of the fight. So going to just put a regeneration on ourself, make sure that we can just keep ourselves healthy. We want to maintain our regeneration, we maintain our beacons on both tanks. Uh, we get a new set of adds coming out here. I am running around. Uh, it is the phase transition, so... The boss is taking 99% reduced damage right now, so we're just using this time to refresh our regenerations. And if we want to get any healing, we're going to need to hit the adds. So uh, cleaning up the adds with single target. Again, would have been great to uh, Living Flame and Arcane Explosion them to get a lot of extra damage on the meters and get some extra healing out. But um, we are pretty low on mana, so that's hard to do. Uh, we drop an Arcane Missile there. And we're just refreshing our rejuvenations because evocation is about to come up here. So I actually want to dump as much of my mana as possible right before I evocate to get the maximum amount of additional mana. Um, just wanding, waiting the extra couple seconds for evocation. Now it's up, so I'm just going to burn through whatever mana I have left here with uh, regeneration on both tanks to make sure they have fresh beacons. Now I'm totally out of mana, so we're going to evocate. Just want to make sure that there's not about to be a breath uh, when you cast evocation, like I did here. Thankfully, I did not get hit by that, but that was really close. You should always try to evocate either right after a breath or when you know that there's not going to be one for you know at least eight seconds. But uh, we go back to healing here. There are adds out. Again, this would be a great time for Living Flame. So I am refreshing my beacons on a few targets, and then we throw the Living Flame at that Void Elemental in the back. It would be great if these droplets were all grouped up so that they were also getting hit for the additional healing, but they are not. Um, my health is getting low. I do have a beacon on myself for a few more seconds, so I'm just dumping some Arcane Blasts right here to get the maximum amount of single target healing that I can on me. I want to keep regeneration up on the tanks. That's going to let our stacks fall off so that I don't need to actually cast an Arcane Missile because that takes a lot of mana. Um, refresh Rejuvenation on myself. Back to Arcane Blasting for single target healing. 
Now, the ad is the priority anyway, but, um, you know, even if he wasn't, it's probably better to hit the ad than the boss because he's a lower level and I'm less likely to be resisted. And if I get resisted, I do no damage. And if I do no damage, I do no healing. So um, now we are back out of mana from that little spamming session there, but it was enough to keep me topped up and keep the tanks topped up. Throw a bandage on myself just because I'm getting very scared and pretty much out of options. Uh, Beacon has not been on the tank for a while, so they are getting really low. Um, I go ahead and throw my last Living Flame here on the Void Elemental. Again, not on the boss because the Void Elemental is a lower level. Even though the boss is so low, we want to just finish him off. I want to get any additional ticks of healing in, and I want to hit the lower level target uh, so that I don't get resisted. And uh, thankfully, even though that was some pretty more pretty poor mana management and got a little scary and lost a couple people at the end there, uh, it was enough to defeat the boss. So the boss is defeated. So not the best showing there necessarily, but uh, was good enough to defeat the boss. Uh, one thing I would definitely change is just holding that living flame and waiting until the ads come out when there's like four or five targets for you to use a living flame on. It's going to do a lot of healing to all of your beacon targets as well as a lot of additional damage. So could have kind of padded the meters that way to get a better parse, but more than that, it actually would have just been more efficient and better overall. While that living flame is out and healing targets, I could have been wanding. Uh, if, if you don't cast for five seconds, your mana regeneration due to spirit kicks in. And then for every two seconds after that, you are gaining your spirit 0.25 of your spirit plus 12.5 if you want to know the actual calculation, as mana. So I could uh, throw out Living Flame, which lasts for 20 seconds, um, put beacons on all the targets, like the tanks and myself that are going to need it, and then just stood there and wanded and regenerated a lot of mana, which would have given me a lot better uh, healing overall for the course of the fight. Um, big thing here was me getting hit by that breath and not clearing. I basically had to heal myself for like the entire fight, which was good for my overall HPS, but uh, not really efficient because I wasn't then able to heal other targets. That's kind of why we lost the tanks at the end. I was out of mana from having to do the additional healing to myself and uh, use my last little bit of mana to keep myself alive instead of the tanks. So the tanks fell over. Thankfully, the boss was low enough, but me getting hit by that breath and not clearing it was, was really, really bad. You don't want any additional stacks on anybody besides the tank so that was a pretty big mistake on my part beyond that i think i did all right um i spent a lot of additional mana spamming arcane blast uh, when i probably shouldn't have in some situations i mean if you just like absolutely need that on-demand healing just spamming arcane blast is going to give you like the most throughput the most hps but what I should have been doing is after every one or two Arcane Blasts, um, throwing out a Rejuvenation to let the Arcane Blast stacks fall off, or maybe even using just a rank 1 Arcane Missiles just to clear stacks and then go back to spamming in those situations would, would end up being a lot more efficient. Um, also, if I had Mass Regeneration on this fight instead of Living Flame, then, you know, two Arcane Blasts, casting a Mass Regeneration, and then casting two more Arcane Blasts, that's going to be a lot more efficient than, than, you know, the way I was spamming Arcane Blasts. Here, but um, beyond that could have been a little bit better with my mana management and uh, probably should have not get hit by that breath that's kind of the main the main takeaways there but anyways that's all for this fight so um, I certainly don't claim to be the best I am still learning as I go here with this new healing build but hopefully you found this video useful to get a look at the encounter see what the fight looks like and uh, kind of see how the healing mage rotation works at least somewhat so uh, thanks for watching hope you found this useful and I hope you have a good one take care peace